Well, hello again, everybody. This is uh, Santa from Santa's Search Adapted Toys, and we're going to show you how we make up the Simon controller so that we have four function capability on a toy that has four functions on it. So this is the uh, MyPal Violet, and I did a video of adapting MyPal Violet over so that it's operated by these buttons. And you see here, it's a switch that goes into it. So, Violet operates, this is the power button, red, and blue is the sleep. Turn that one off. Green is connected up for the music. And yellow, since there's no purple on the Simon, that matches up for the hand over here. Does the uh, questions and talks and stuff. So, we're going to set this aside and we're going to show you how I take the Simon toy and turn it into a four button switch controller for those toys that require four uh, systems. So here's the Simon. Uh, here's the tools we're going to use. Set that up here for a moment. I got my third hand for holding things. We're going to do some soldering. Um, move these in. So we have the Simon. Put some tape on here. So that when we open up the case, remember which direction it goes back together. So while I've got that in my hand, let's do a... And I got push down, so here. Let's do a registration, if you will. I want the two pieces of tape to come back together to make it easier when we assemble it, because there's too many different directions it could go. Uh, we're going to use two... Uh, st stereo ex extensions, six foot extensions. So these uh, <clears throat> extensions are stereo, so they have a tip, ring, and sleeve. So it allows us to use tip for the common, the ring for one function, uh, one color on the button, and the sleeve for the other color. So with those two <clears throat> cables, we will be able to use all four of these switches. I like things nice and neat. <clears throat> so we're going to put the cable inside of a uh, cable manager. This is braided sleeve. It's co called quarter inch braided sleeve. And I've cut a piece off so that we can use it here. So let's get started. I'll set that to the side. <clears throat> so the first thing we need to do is to cut the, the two con uh, cables. And... These pieces we're not going to use, but I don't want to cut them right at the end because these will go in toys later on. So let's just go ahead and save back about, I don't know, seven, eight inches of it. That's usually about all I need for the toys. So this is not thrown in the garbage. It will go into toys when we do the adaption. We're going to color code one of these so in the future, when things get uh, put together, I've got a piece of shrink wrap that we're uh, shrink tubing we're putting on. So this now becomes the blue connector for that when that time comes. So these two go together, and match it up, and we're going to feed it into the shrink tubing or the uh, sleeve manager. I'm going to use a pencil to open it up a little bit. Kind of see if that will stay long enough. Good. Push the cabling in. And this acts like that Chinese finger puzzle that we had years ago when, we, when Santa was a much younger child. Um, and so as it pushes together it expands and opens up. When you pull it out, it tightens. So we're going to just slide this all the way down to the end. Now it takes a few minutes to do that, and I'm pretty particular about how it gets done. So I've already made one up. We're going to set this to the side. And voila, the magic of video. We now have a ready-to-go cable where I've done that. The shrink wrap is on there. It's all, And it's managed up so that we can keep it close and we can start modifying Simon. So let's open Simon up. Put him over. Get the cordless drill. 
There's six screws that hold this back on. This is a, a brand new Simon out of the out of the box. I'll show you here in a second that let's see we'll get the screws all loosened up. Hopefully that's set out of frame. Turn it over so they all fall out. So to show you what this this is functioning Simon, fresh from the store. Um, we could play the game, but we're not going to. We're going to take it apart. And because we're not playing the game, the first thing we're going to do is <coughs> cut some wires. I'm going to use these wires as jumpers here in a few minutes. So that is set there. I need the wire, this wire to get inside the case somewhere. So I'm going to find a place that looks good to me. I like to put it near support. See, I have my rad point drill here. I like to put the wires near where there's support. And so this is a support area, so we're going to put the wires next to that, or the cables next to that. And this single hole. I drilled that with the brad point bit, by the way, if you're not sure what that is. Um, let's see, I've got something here. So it's got a point on it, a very sh sharp point on it for the starter instead of the, uh, the uh, cone-shaped regular drill. And so when you start that and you push it in, it holds it really snug. It makes it easy to keep the drill from walking around on the plastic. So we'll knock the loose material out of there. We're done with this piece of wood. I was just using it to protect my countertop. So let's see. We had six screws. We're going to put those on the magnet. Let's move this out of three, four, five, six, because they usually fall on the floor if you don't. You also see here in, in the debris, there's a little piece of plastic that fell out. On the Simon, there's a reset button when it comes back up from the bottom, and that's there. We don't need it for this, so it becomes garbage, and we'll tidy up. Okay. Take the cable, which we prepared, and so we're going to put my hole, run it through the hole. So you see here I've stripped one, or I've pulled the outer sheathing off one of my cables. And I did that so I could kind of remember which one was which without having to do any color coding to it. Earlier you saw that I had put a piece of uh, a shrink um, insulator on there, so, uh, some shrinking, shrink tube. This shrink tube matches up with the one that I've stripped the back a little bit. So I've got that set identified so I know which is which. And I'm going to pull the wire in far enough that I don't really have any wire strain when I put this cover back on. I'm going to, essentially, if I can reach all the way across, then that's that's pretty good. I've got excess wire. It'll reach across. We're going to use the wire tie as a strain relief and to keep the wire from coming out, the cables from coming out. So right now, oops, we missed it. Right now would be a good time to put that on. And I like to make sure those are really snug. It's 
especially since we're going around two wires instead of just one. Keep the stripping tight. Trim the excess. And that's done. So now we're going to set the case aside for a moment. Um, we're, uh, see, I'm going to remove this other piece because it's again no longer needed. A little bit later, I'll take the batteries out. Um, so well, let's do it now. That way I won't forget. And we now have three batteries to use in some other toys. My battery drawer is filling up because I do a few of these at a time. So we'll set that aside and we'll go to work on what it's going to take to modify this. So we're not going to take any of the outer perimeter off or these little control uh, circuit boards. But these circuit boards are set. The, I don't know if you can see it here very well. But we have four wires in a ribbon wire that comes off. The inside one's black and then there's three white ones. And that's the same on all of these. So the inside one happens to be the ground. Now rather than putting wires, my wires onto these wires, I'm going to solder them right onto these circuit boards. And I think that's going to be a much sturdier, cleaner application. So I need to, we're going to use the red and the black wires. We'll pull them off the circuit board and set them to the side here for a moment. We need to disconnect all of that from the main circuit board here. And go ahead and get rid of it up near the smaller circuit boards on each switch. So what we're doing is there's a switch attached to this that's activated when the button is pushed. And so we're going to keep that. That's what we're going to use to activate our toys. But we don't need any of this wiring here. So it goes away. So we've got one more. Two, three, four, crashed. Okay. <clears throat> so let's get our heating iron warming up. Soldering iron. Plugged in. Oops. And turned on. <clears throat> so I'm going to set this on top of here now for proximity. Looking pretty good. Take these two wires, strip back enough of the end on one of them on each end. Put my glasses on now so I can see better. I'm going to strip back this one. No There it is, that's garbage, so I get it off the bench. Knowing that it's the uh, blue identified wire out there. And oops. Strip the ends. I twist the wires out here so that we don't have any errant pieces that sticking off the side that might cause a short circuit to something. And on the blue one, we need it as a jumper. So it doesn't matter which one of these wires I grab, but I'm just reusing what came with the, 
with the toy. So we're going to twist these two together so that we can jump it across two of these circuit boards on the toy. On Simon. I want a little bit more wire here for this project. Okay. So we'll get this twisted together. Set the saw up. We're going to use the third hand to hold that up while we put uh, some solder on it and tin, basically tin up the, the connection. I'm not sure you can see this real well, uh, but it, it, again, this is not a soldering lesson, but it's... Uh, So we're soldering those two wires together and tinning them at the same time. I want to bring the other two wires up here. Now we're not going to put them together, but I'm going to put them both in the third hand just to hold them still long enough we can get some solder on them. So now we've got three wires with a jumper on it to control something. I like for one of these controllers to operate the red and the blue button. So this cable that we've just made up is going to go to the red and the blue button. So to do that, we need the common. And I'm going to, now that I got this tinned up, I'm going to trim it back just a bit get my tweezers and we're going to lay it down on what would have been the black wire originally which is the inside and it says ground on that circuit board oops I got ahead of myself I want to set up the third hand to be holding my solder up for me So I can get a little daub of that when the time comes. So we're going to solder this to ground. Get that on there, heat it up, get to the ground. Hold it long enough for the wire to the solder to cool, and that's done. There's the jumper part. We need to reach all the way over to this ground because we're connecting common here is going to be the red and the blue buttons. So for this I'm going to tin the wire again. Now that I've got a length of it tinned, I don't want it to short out on anything. I'm going to trim it back a little bit. And we're going to lay it on this other ground for the blue button. Oops. Okay, so the white and the yellow in this particular cable sheath operates the tip, no I'm sorry, not the tip, the tip is blue, but it operates the ring and the sleeve. Um, which one of those, it doesn't matter to me because I will match it up when I build it to the toy, but I'm going to put one of these on the red and the other one on the blue. solder on here. Of 
shit over here to the glue. Little soldering. that on there so what that soldered to was the ground of the common for the um, which was the black I showed earlier and then the one right next to it is for the switch the other two are for lights that come back on when the Simon is operating so we don't need that we don't need the outer ones we just need the inside ones so that side is done Now I'm going to come over here and do the other side. a bit strip back the three colors so that we have some bare wire to work off of we're going to add the other wire that we saved off of the toy off the battery pack a little bit more to strip there again to the blue which is our tip because that's our common when we want to Activate switches. And again, use the third hand to hold things in place long enough for us to tin that wire. All right, so we've got these wires tinned up and ready to go, and they're going to go on the other side. Let's kind of move our toy around so that those... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn the whole thing over. see if this works better for me. Yeah, it does. Put the solder back into the third hand. And the same thing applies on the other side. We're going to put the common to the ground. either the green or the yellow, it doesn't matter because we're going to jump for those. Tin this up a bit again. And lay it on the ground over on the other one.
we're going to put white on the green. And I'm going to trim these wires just a little bit. I pull it out. I, I, I when I strip it back, I strip more than I need, so that I have a. I can do the twisting on it and uh, pull the wires together better. But then it's too long to go on the circuit because it's a possibility of it accidentally getting onto the next circuit and shorting out. So after I tin it up, I, tr I trim it back. There's that one. And we are approaching. I know it looks short, but it's not. It's a, <laughs> it's a matter of, it's, what it is, is a matter of being able to uh, get it over there before, for the soldering part. So, they're all soldered together. You can see that uh, the light's not going to be good for the camera. Oh, part one broke off when I was playing with it there. So, back to the soldering. Where did it break from? It was here. Shows I didn't do a very good job of soldering that one. Okay, so they're all soldered on. Now, what we want to do is we need to confirm that this is functioning and doing what we want to do before we finally commit to putting it back together, uh, screwing it together. So I'm going to temporarily set it together again. We did a matching up of the uh, tape so we know what went where and we need to test this so to test it we get our toy same toy that we modified and we're just playing with it at the beginning of the video. We'll put blue to blue and see if I've activated the right ones. Teach me your name. So that red is red. That's a red foot. Blue. Okay. In this case, blue is activating the music hand, but when I program this to a toy, to an actual toy, I will make sure that the programming goes in because this will be hooked up to the toy as I adapt it. Can you think of something? But right now, what we're doing is just checking to verify that all the wiring is good. Five minutes of bed. So in this case, we can see that we have a couple things mixed up, but. Uh, box is going to perform perfectly well on the toy it's going to be made for. Red activates the right button. Yellow in this case activates what would be the blue. The green one's oh, the green one's activating what's purple. And uh, the blue is activating the music. So this button, this controller is, is ready to go. Uh, turn it back over, put the screws in, and uh, that's how you adapt Simon to be a four-button controller for, uh, for four-function toys. Thank you for watching.